an off-grid kid driving the Jeep. I've been letting him park it in the back here when I pull in from the cabin. And I've been letting him pull it up sometimes. And we're going to do some work today on the Toyota Sequoia. And he was all excited. He's like, oh, can I bring the Jeep up? I said, sure. And here he comes. <laughs> He's still getting down the throttle. He's <laughs> he spins the tires sometimes. <laughs> How'd you do there, Dale Earnhardt? Yeah, right. Junior. Come on, can you figure out how to get the key out of yeah, the ignition? I don't want to screw it up. Hold on. <laughs> Future of America, folks. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. I don't know what I did. Oh, you gotta put it you gotta put it in park, well, knucklehead. Why do I keep forgetting? I don't know. Yeah. Now you can take it out. Holy moly. I'm not good with this tree. Well, the other thing that I got, guys, is some of you guys talked about the reason why I have that ticking in the engine. Somebody suggested that it was a fuel filter and that it was ticking because there wasn't enough fuel getting to the cylinders. And although it didn't make a whole lot of sense on its face, uh, I figured it was probably a good idea to change a fuel filter anyway because I've had this car for quite a while now. I put, I don't know, 35,000 miles on it. And I figured... I change out the fuel filter. So I bought one the other day, it was like 22 bucks, and I'm gonna attempt to change that out. I've never done it, so we'll see. And I'm gonna hand this over to you. All right. So today's agenda, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to change the um, transmission fluid on my Toyota. When I bought this, I went through all the fluids, I changed out some of them, the transmission fluids still look good. But I put, I don't know, seven, 8,000 miles on this car. And I like, because I don't know when the last time was it was changed out. And because we're not going to do a complete flush, some people think that's a bad thing because you dislodge um, maybe some debris inside the transmission and can actually do more harm than good. We're going to just drain the pan and then we're going to refill it. And then maybe in another 5,000 miles I might drain it again. Try to get as much of the old stuff out of there and replace it with, with new stuff. Um, the nice thing about this car is unlike most other cars I've ever looked at where you got to drop the whole pan there's actually a drain plug in this so it's pretty simple I don't have to take the whole pan apart I don't have to put a gasket on I've done that on the Jeep I showed you guys that in a video this one we're gonna drain it just like we would oil and then refill it and we should be good to go so come on along okay guys well I'm up underneath the car here and I hope you can see that okay but this is the transmission pan right here and you can see all the little bolts where you would normally have to loosen that up and take the whole pan down and then replace the gasket and hope that you get a good seat well this one has a little drain plug right there so that's what we're going to undo we're going to let it drain and we're going to fill it back up see how it goes try to keep it try to keep the mess down to a minimum okay guys so you're just using a 14 millimeter socket here and i got the pan the the, uh, the oil pan down here and we're just going to loosen it up and see how this goes this is a 2004 Toyota Sequoia. I think I have 155,000 miles on it now. Um, again, this fluid when I checked it looked to be pretty clean. But since I have no clue when this was last changed, I'm going to go ahead and change it out. See how this goes. Yeah, that fluid still looks pretty good. But that's okay. It's, uh, because we're not doing a complete flush and fill, it's probably not a bad idea to drain out some of the fluid when it is pretty clean and just add new stuff in and then you do that a couple of times and you should have most of the old fluid out. It may not be the most efficient way to do it. Like I said, the, uh, the flush and fill where you have to have a professional mechanic if you don't have the tools yourself do it. Some people say that that could be a bad thing for older transmissions because there's stuff that gets on the inside of the transmission and, and you could dislodge it and then it'll gum up the work. So. Anyway, we'll see how much we get out of here, then I'll show you how I refill it up top. Some people will actually put new stuff in, run it for a minute, drain it again, add more stuff. I don't think I'm going to do that this time because this fluid looks pretty dang good. It's nice and pink still. It's not brown. You don't smell the burntness. But um, so many people don't take the time to do this little bit of maintenance, and it's going to cost you thousands of dollars if you keep your car any length of time. Transmissions and transmission repairs are very expensive. So why not spend 10, 15 bucks, get some fluid and 
do this every once in a while, especially on this vehicle where you just have the drain plug you got to take out. How much simpler can you get than that? Nothing's coming through. Oh, now it's coming through. The goal is to get out as much as you can and replace it with fresh, clean stuff. I mean, it'd be great if you can get it all out. It just doesn't work that way with this, at least not that I know of. If you guys know a way to make this where you get more out without having special tools, holla. But what I just did was I started the vehicle and just cycled it through park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, low, just for a second to see if we can get more pumping through. I don't think that's a good thing to do, but I don't know that I'm going to hurt it, you know, doing it for five or ten seconds. Again, I'm just trying to get out as much as I can. And I'll probably end it as soon as this stops dripping. I'll just put the drain plug back in and refill it. And I'll show you how to do that on the engine bay. All right, guys, so here's the engine bay. And very much like your oil dipstick, you have a transmission dipstick. And this is it on this particular car. It's like a red um, dipstick where the oil is usually yellow. But unlike your oil, where there's a separate spot to fill it and a separate spot to check it with a dipstick, you actually are going to fill your transmission oil, your ATF fluid, right there in the dipstick. So that's where you're going to put your funnel and fill it back up. So we'll do that here in just a second. All right, guys, so I cleaned off the plug with a paper towel. It's got a little washer on here, and the washer's not wanting to stay on there. It's got a little metal washer. We're down to just a little drip, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this back up. I'm going to hand tighten it first, and then I'm going to take my 14 millimeter socket and wrench, change it to tighten, and then tighten it back up. And you know what? I do have a torque wrench, and I should probably check and see what the what the torque specs are on that and do it the right way, but I don't know where it is, and I'm just guessing. I got it tight. All right, guys, so here's the old fluid. It looks to me like we got maybe four quarts out. That's my guesstimation. And look at the mess that we made. Not much at all. Just a little bit there. No mess now. Drops. Huh? I said no mess now. Yeah, no mess now. So it, it's smart to put something underneath where you're draining it. And uh, we just use this little piece of foam. So it caught the four drips. It was nice and easy. Again, if you drop the pan and if your vehicle has a filter, it, it's a good idea to do that every so often as well. Check your owner's manual. But um, this one we're just doing a down and dirty, quick and easy, drain some of the fluid, put some new fluid in, because the fluid looked good. So that's the way we're doing this one. All right, gang, you want to recycle when you can. I don't know who takes transmission fluid. I know I can't find anywhere to take antifreeze. But we're going to put this in an old oil container. Try to keep it as environmentally friendly as we possibly can. Plus, this gives me a good idea how much we got out of here. I estimated four quarts, probably close to the four and a half. Yeah, that's where we're at, about four and a half quarts. So now we know how much we have to put in there, at least four and a half quarts. All right, what I do with the rest of this is any paper towels that you use during this process, I just throw them down in the pan here. I throw them right down in the pan and it absorbs anything that's left in the pan. And then on the next oil change, I just put those in a plastic bag and I throw them out. All right, guys, so here's the funnel I'm going to use. Real important, when you're changing any fluids out, you want to make sure you use a clean funnel when you're putting new fluids back in. doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be going through all this work and trying to replace the fluids with clean fluids, get the dirty fluids out, if you're going to use a dirty funnel to put the clean fluid back in, contaminate it. So clean your funnel. All right, guys, so I took the dipstick off. I always clean off the dipstick every time I take it out because, again, I don't want contamination to get on the dipstick and then put a dirty dipstick back in a clean fluid. Makes no sense. Got the funnel in there and then we're going to just try to be as careful as we can putting at least four and a half quarts back in there and I'll show you the way that I check my transmission fluid. I learned this trick I don't know 15 years ago again I'm no auto mechanic so I don't know if it's the absolute right way to do it. Maybe you guys that know better can tell us in the comments but I'll show you the little trick when it comes to checking your transmission fluid that I learned that I hope is right. Hey anyway, guys I'm never going to get this exactly right i do the best i can i'm probably yep there goes a couple of drips right there right off the bat you know what they say you can dance and you can prance but the last few drops will always fall down your pants what <laughs> is that really a saying yeah i just said it all right so it is now it if is it now. wasn't it is now 
Off Grid Nation, 2016. Yeah. So guys, always check your owner's manual. Each vehicle requires its own specific type of transmission fluid. Some of them are ATF4, some of them are 4 plus. Here I got the Walmart Super Tech and I checked my owner's manual and this will work just fine for this type of vehicle. So, But make sure that you put the right stuff in there. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put the wrong stuff in there. Does it? it could actually do a ton of damage and that's not the goal that we're trying to achieve. We're trying to make things better not worse. Guilty sometimes by trying to make things better I make them worse. But the way you want to check your fluid now is you want to warm up the, the vehicle, get it to temperature, and then take it from park and bring it, slowly cycle it through all the gears, and then bring it back up to neutral, right on the emergency brake, and then you check it while it's hot, while it's running, while it's in neutral. That's the way I was taught to do it. Tell me if I'm doing it the wrong way, tell me if there's a, a better way of doing it or the right way to do it, and we'll change the way we do it if it makes sense. So that's the way I do it, all right? I'm not a mechanic, I'm a weekend warrior, backyard mechanic. Did stay to Holiday Inn Express at one point in my life. Like I said, we started up, we get it to temperature, put the emergency brake on, and I just go ahead and I cycle through all the gears. Back up through. Leave it neutral, and when it's hot, when it's up to temperature, that's when I check it. And you'll see on the dipstick, there'll be a place where it says hot, place where it says cold. I always like checking it when it's hot. Okay, we're up to temperature now. Go ahead and check the dipstick. And I don't know if you can see it on there. But right there it says hot, right there it says cold. It's probably difficult for you to see. Hot, cold, hot, cold. And when it's hot, you want it in between those two indentations. When it's cold, in between those, or cool in between those two indentations. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off, put it back in, and see what the reading is. According to this, guys, I'm low. I gotta put more in. And guys, every time I'm in here, every time I open up the hood, I always try to look and see if there's anything else I need to be concerned about. I try to keep my windshield washer fluid uh, up. And if you're like me in the south, in the summertime, I just add water in there. But in the wintertime, it gets cold here, and sometimes it freezes, and I don't want that to bust open. So I did go ahead and I added some of the minus 20 degree fluid. I checked my uh, power steering fluid, and I'm right up where I need to be, but I'm on the, well, actually I'm perfect. I'm right where I need to be. So I'm going to leave that right there. Check my brake fluid. Good, good there. I'm going to go ahead and check my engine oil, and I also check my coolant. I know that I went ahead and I changed out the air filter on the last oil change, so I'm good to go there for another, you know, 10,000 miles or so. And I always try to check my battery a couple times a year. I showed you that, I think, in a previous video where you just pop open those caps and make sure the distilled water is topped off, and you make sure that your battery has a little longer life as well. These suckers are expensive now. None of this stuff is inexpensive anymore, so if I can get an extra year out of the battery by, my, by maintaining it with uh, 20 cents of distilled water every now and again, that's a good trade. Hey right, guys, I told you about checking the battery fluid levels. I just usually put a flathead screwdriver in there and gently pry it up. And if you look in the top here, I hope you're able to see that those are all full on this side. This one's down just a little bit, but it's not down below where it needs to be. And you know, you don't want to overfill these, and I might have did that on the last time, but they all look good to me. I'll check the other side too. And you just go ahead and you replace it, same way you put it on. Make sure it's seated properly. We'll just check the other side. And guys, make sure you have eye protection when you're doing this. Yeah, those all look good as well. Again, I, I probably filled those up when I got the vehicle, which was what, six, seven months ago? Yep. Checking the engine oil, you want to get it to temperature and then let it turn off the engine and let it rest for a little bit. Let the oil get back down in the pan. Go all the way back down there. We'll check it. Yep, see the hole right there? That's the high end, that's the low end. And I'm just below the high end, so I'm good to go. Just a couple other tips when it comes to battery maintenance. I'll tell you that I have one of those battery brushes where you're going to go ahead and you're going to take off the terminal. They're terminal brushes. They're metal and you put it on there and you just kind of shake it back and forth and it gets all the corrosion that might be on those lead posts off. And then you tighten it back down. And they even have a spray you can spray over it to keep the terminals from corroding. I've never used it. But I know when they put a new battery in there, most of the places that 
install new batteries we'll, we'll use it and normally I would do that now even though I don't see a ton of corrosion there but just as a general rule once a year once every other year whatever I'll do that I don't know where my brush is because everything's still packed away so I keep threatening that once I move and I get everything actually unpacked and put away in its rightful spot and I know where everything is I'll actually do a little bit more maintenance one other thing when you're under here is check out your radiator this is your cooling system guys your antifreeze pumps through the engine, picks up the heat, comes back out to the coolant, and you see all those fins, the air hits that and dissipates the heat. So it's kind of like your uh, sweat gland, your circulatory system. And I showed you in a video before where I use this professional cleaning product, you put it on there and it really deep cleans it. I've used it for my air conditioners for my uh, central air outside in my house, and I use it for this as well. So I did that five, six months ago, but you can see there's some bugs and stuff on there. Take a hose, run it through there, clean all that stuff off. Just another thing to keep your engine running a little more cool. It's gonna make it more efficient and heat, excessive heat for an engine is a bad thing. So just little things like that will help, should help prolong the life of your car. And we all know how expensive cars are, guys, and we all know how expensive repairs are. So if you can do these simple, easy little things that are inexpensive or cost you really no money in some cases, like spraying a little water on that doesn't, doesn't cost me anything, really. It could really cut down on re future repair bills, and that's a good thing. Chicken break. Well, this mad man. <laughs> Hey, turn it so so we can. All right. Do you want me to put the trunk towards the ship? Well, I I wanted you to come in and just make a turn. That's all. So back it up. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, Spinny. All right, all right. That's good. Now just turn this way. Whoa! Oh my gosh. Slow, 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 slow. Holy moly! I see that I have a brake light out over here, which I kind of knew that I had, but now I really know that I have, so we got to take care of that. Do you want me to go park today? No, we got to take care of the brake light. Dude, you almost ran into the fence. You're spinning the tires. What's your deal? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a professional driver. Now, do you want to hop in the passenger seat? Not on your life. Holy moly. <laughs> mess. All right, we're going to take the lens cover off. There's just two screws over here. We got the top one off. Now, I have, I think, two light bulbs. I don't know where either one is. Because again, in the move, I should just pull right out, I think. It wouldn't be good if it's cracked it. Yeah, it would stink. I should just pull right out. The booty went it. straight to the police. <laughs> that is what I've ever have happened. Is that a reference from the 80s show? Probably a 70s. Oh, all right. I was going to say 70s and then I said 80s instead. Woody Woodpecker, my friend. I know who Woody Woodpecker is. <sighs> not like forcing it, but. Oh, there it is. It just popped Ooh. right up. Okay, so now we got to determine because there's three bulbs which bulb it is. So you're going to get inside and you're going to press on the brake. Okay, so you pressed on the brake, it's the top bulb that's out. You just kind of unscrew this little plastic gasket. And. I'm trying to see if the bulb is blown. It looks a little brown around there, so it's got to be it. Right? It's got to be it. But the bulb itself looks okay, I think. Maybe it's the housing. Let's pull out another one and see what we see. That one looks better. Hmm. Okay, all right, we're going to find the right bulb and we're going to replace this bulb. You know, gang, we're driving down the road here. When I came out this morning, I could smell smoke and I thought maybe it was just a, you know, bonfire, somebody burning something around the hood, but this is kind of all over the place and I was asking OGK, go ahead and tell me what you heard. And on the news yesterday morning, it was saying how the smoke is getting into the Charlotte area. So from the wildfires? From the wildfighters. So wildfires. The, yeah, the wildfires. So look at that, folks. We got smoke down here. Uh, the fires are burning nowhere near us, but it's definitely traveling west to east, and it's catching us down here. Not wildfighters. Fi wildfires. You can't even say Firefighters? That. Wildfires. 
firefighters, wild fighters. All right, guys, so even though I know for a fact that I have these bulbs somewhere, I couldn't find them. They weren't easily accessible. So we went and we spent the seven bucks and we got us two new bulbs. And I'm going to try to handle it without getting my paws all over the glass. Your and dirty paws. My dirty paws, because I think the oils will reduce the life of the bulbs. So just put it in like so. There's a rubber gasket on there that keeps the moisture out. Let's try that again. There we go. And that should be good. All right, so we're going to have OGK go in there and press the brake light and see if it works. Ta-da! We're good to go. No tickets. Last thing I want to do is get pulled over for something silly like that, and next thing you know, cops are freaking out on me. Come on, doggy. All right, I think we're good. Let's put this back down on here like a so. And then we put the screws in like a so. Tighten her down. Good. Good. All right, I think we're good. There we go. Job well done. All right, next little project. So I love my steel chainsaw. What do I have here? Steel MS-180C. So I think that means it's an 18 inch bar. And this thing, I mean, my biggest problem with chainsaws is they don't start when you need them to start. And let's face it, you don't use them all the time, but when you go to use them, you want it to start. This steel does a good job. It starts right up for me. And another good thing about the company is they send you emails when you, I, I signed up to uh, register for the warranty, which I normally don't do, but I did in this case. And I get emails from them every so often, of course, trying to sell you stuff, but also as reminders, hey, don't forget winter's here, winterize your stuff, make sure it lasts long, clean it, yada, yada, yada. So I said, hey, let me get out there and do that. So I'm going to take this apart, take the bar off, um, clean everything, make sure everything's lubricated right, and I'll probably put some stable in the fuel I don't know if you should drain it out or not. Some people say drain it out, make sure the carburetor's uh, clear, but I'll put some stable in there and some carb cleaner. And uh, the goal is that when I go to start it up next time, whether it's a week from now or two months from now, it'll start. Made in America. As you can see, the bar looks like it's got some wear on it. Maybe I need a new bar, but the chain is relatively new. I think I've only used it once since I've gotten the new chain on there. So I'm gonna go ahead, you see all the stuff that's caught up in there. I'm going to now maybe I used it twice, but in any event, I'm going to take this apart and clean everything up and get it ready for the long storage. Oop, what'd I do? Oh, I don't know what it is.